All right, boys and girls. This is um, going to be a relatively quick little video. And what I want to address is lathe lubrication. And, of course, this is one of those things that has come up on the Atlas list, on the Atlas forum again. And uh, the, the flame wars are already starting to rage on it. Um, I had originally started doing a little video that I was going to call a lathe basics, I guess. But I was going to do it as a sequel to the video that I put out previously about why you, how to get a smooth finish on your lathe or why my lathe's turning a rough finish whatever i named that and i'll put a link that to that up above here if you haven't seen that you can go see it um and if it interests you why well, stay tuned i may still label this number two and we'll just be, kind of begin a series on some of this stuff and it'll pertain to things that pop up on some of the forums or some of the things that i think are relevant and what i wanted to cover today is lathe lubrication because that started then and the big the big discussion now is you have to have a whey oil on your lathe and this will basically pertain to any of the atlas size machines now we're not talking about a production machine because the requirements for lubrication are different and by lubrication i'm talking about machine tool lubrication i'm not talking about cutting lubricants like uh, sulfur based cutting oil or um, water soluble oils i'm not going to address that all at this point in time although they do have a little bit of an impact on the way we take care of our lathes but realistically for this application it's not going to make a bit of difference so I'm talking about lays in the Atlas Craftsman size machine. Um, I think this will equally apply to a 9-inch South Bend or any of the imports in that size, the 9x20s, that type of thing. Although they call for a little bit different care on them sometimes. And, and there are a few little quirks on, on my little 9x20 that's a CNC conversion. So anyway, this is going to apply to the small lays in that size and the Atlas milling machines and the shapers. And they all basically can take the same lubricants and the same care to go in them. On my, on my lays milling machines and shapers, I use three lubricants in the shop. I use a straight motor oil, a 20 weight is the preferred one. Um, I use a 50-50 mix of 20 weight motor oil and STP and then I use a grease out of a grease gun for the grease fittings on oh some of the machines um, will have a grease zert on them and, and they obviously require grease so so I use a uh, lithium based grease on those um, and in all honesty it's not really important which one now the big the big discussion going on is you have to have whey oils and it's digressed to well you can get this one cheaper from here or you can get something else cheaper from someplace else um, if you look at the atlas manual of lathe operations which everybody kind of says is the bible you follow that information and they'll go through all of the different uh editions of them and that type of thing this happens to be a 33rd edition so it's a later manual um I don't, in all honesty, think it makes a bit of difference. When you look at Atlas's recommendations for them, it says, keep your lathe well oiled. Oil it thoroughly at the point shown on the chart, page 6-7. Um, use a good grade of machine oil. Automotive oil, SAE number 20, is excellent for general lathe, lathe use. You go on, and that's basically what they tell you to use for everything. They say nothing about having to have a whey oil. Um, when you've got... Um, Timkey bearings, care of Timkey bearings. Lays equipped with Timken bearings can be set to work immediately. Oil the bearings every time the lathe is in use with SAE 10 motor oil or a good grade of machine oil. Doesn't say anything about having to have whey oil. So, you know, while everybody's saying you got to have whey oil, bullshit. That's crap. Um, and in some instances, I'm going to tell you, I think it's a detriment to them. Now, when I said that I used a 50 50 mix of um, STP and motor oil. I will occasionally use that on my lathe. I, prim I primarily use that on my lead screw and on the uh, gear train because it runs a little bit smoother, it fills a little bit of that better, and um, I think quiets the gears down a little bit too while it's on there. It does stick a little bit better than standard motor oil, but Atlas says standard motor oil. So, like I say, everybody that says you've got to have whey oil, that's wrong. You know, I don't care what you say, um, and I really challenge anybody to tell me a really good reason why you have to have whey oil on your Atlas size machine lathe. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm primarily talking about a 10 inch. Um, you know, that will apply to the later clausing 12 inches. Much bigger than that, and the requirements I think become a little more important as to what oils you use. But in in that 
clausing 12 inch and smaller style lathe in the in the things we're normally talking about and primarily the 10 inch lathes and the 6 inches you don't need anything more than just motor oil the downside to using any more than that that's going to stick onto your bed is it tells you to keep that lathe clean so it doesn't collect dust and dirt and grit so what they want you to do when you take care of your machine or as you're maintaining your machine is when you're done using it for the day they want you to wipe it all down clean it all up put a protective coating of oil on it and then cover it is what they suggest i doubt that hardly anyone is uh covering their lathe so Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to wipe it down if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, have it clean and dry, and then when you go back to use it the next day, why then you re-oil that, everything, all those surfaces, and um, start your day machining again. If you're using something like, like whey oil, it's going to be harder to clean off. You're going to say, oh, I've got expensive whey oil on there. I don't want to wipe that off. I'm going to leave it on there and use it the next day. So you're actually introducing grit into that, into the surfaces of your lathe so why do you want to do that follow atlas's recommendations use standard i use standard motor oil it's inexpensive it's easy to get you can get it wherever you are you're not spending money to have it shipped in um i looked at vectra whatever vectra's number is they number one two three and four i think is what they've got that anyway their whey oil and from one of the suppliers it was 34.95 you know plus shipping you know what I'm gonna go and I'm gonna spend three bucks for a quart of oil or you know twelve bucks for a gallon of oil from my AutoZone from my Ace Hardware doesn't matter where it is you know and you'll have the discussion of detergent and non-detergent you know what if you've got lubricant on your lathe that's what's important you want lubricant between your bearing surfaces that's what you're after you want it to uh, maintain a film of oil underneath there so that you can continue to have a good sliding surface and and reduce the wear that you're going to get in your machine that's probably already very well worn if it's like mine here in the shop i i don't do anything special with my 10 inch uh, sheldon i give it the same treatment that i give my atlas machines they get the same lubricants um, it works well you know so i see no reason to have a great big discussion about lubricants when it's another one of those things that doesn't matter the recommendations to a new budding machinist or somebody that's just bought a new lathe a new to them lathe why uh, they're being told they have to go and they have to buy this and they have to buy that and they have to do something else what they really have to do is just make sure your lathe is clean and and well oiled when you start to use it and um, you know spend the time learning how to operate it you know the idea that your motor oil is not going to stay on there for an extended period of time is fine if you you don't want it to run extended i doubt that very few people are running an atlas lathe for more than three or four hours continuously at a time and i think that's probably a stretch so that's probably your day's work and if you have to stop at lunchtime and clean it off again and re-oil it so what most of my smaller machines for a, for a cutting lubricant i'm using a sulfur based thing and and when atlas machines were being produced the the primary lubricant for cutting lubricants in in the home shop was probably a sulfur based cutting oil or any of the other ones that the guys will talk about that are old technology and that was all well and fine there was probably very few home machines that were being run on flood coolant or a mist coolant most of them were cutting fluids dabbed on with a chip brush or a acid brush and that was your lubricant and that still pertains today if you are running a mist coolant water-based mist coolant or a flood coolant on them yes it's probably going to wash your lubrication off of the bed or off of your sliding surfaces faster than if you weren't um, than if you were just daubing on your cutting oil with a a uh, drip application or a brushed on application and the reality is in the home shop usually those water-based coolants will, will not leave an oil film you know they say they will and in a production application where the mixes are kept consistent and within the recommend tolerances they do leave a protective film on your lathe for most home shops there's probably not going to happen you're going to develop rust very quickly so you're back to the same old thing of every day you're going to wipe down your machine and you're going to maintain it properly and re-oil it when you get ready to use it or if you've used a water-based solvent you're going to go back clean it up real well as best you can underneath the ways and everything and you're going to re-oil those surfaces then 
and uh, to displace that oil to reduce it. So it all comes down to maintenance. Uh, that's kind of my rant on this. Uh, any comments you've, lo you've got for me, I invite you to leave them below. Um, it's not going to turn into a big troll session. I will go in and delete those comments out and, and block the viewer if we, we tend to decide we're going to troll my opinions. Um, everybody's entitled to their opinion. If somebody's got a better way to do it and wants to do their video to show a better way of doing it, I invite that. I'm much more uh, apt to give credibility to somebody that's willing to take the time to do that than to somebody that's going to sit there and troll the, the channel and say, oh, well, no, that's wrong, or you can't do it this way, or you have to do it that way. Um, when somebody tells me they're an expert to something, I, I have, I give that very little credibility. You know, there's a lot of good information out there. There's a lot of gentlemen that have a vast amount of knowledge, far more than I do. And I invite that, uh, I invite that knowledge to be shared. But if you're just going to sit back and tell me you're an expert on the, on the, uh, topic and not give me any proof of that other than just to, to, uh, complain about what I do, I, I don't have a whole lot of time for that. So anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you gained something from this.